You're listening to the Platte River Bard. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Platte River Bard. This is Chris Berger. And I'm Sherry Berger. And we are here today with Kim Jubinville, and she is playing the character of... Who are you playing, Kim? I'm playing Harry at the, the Chief of Staff. All right. And we are also here with <laughs> Ashley Kobza, and she is playing... Who are you playing, Ashley? I play Jean, the President's Secretary. Uh, press secretary all right and then also we are here with kim gambino and she is playing bernadette the president's sister aha and they are all in the blue barn theater's production of potus or this is the greatest title or behind every great dumbass are seven women trying to keep him alive (laughs) that's the greatest title thank you all for joining us via the internet today uh, and it's kind of a weird setup, but I think we're doing all right. Uh, thank you very much for talking with us this afternoon. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey. Thank you. This is definitely a woman-inspired cast. And I'm so are there seven women in your cast then? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seven fierce and funny women. I love it. <laughs> So this was written by Selena Fillinger. This play premiered on Broadway in 2022, but it was written prior to that. Um, And she was quite a young playwright, 23, 24, when she wrote it. And uh, she's a screenwriter. And um, the play is really very funny. And it is about the president of the United States, but more importantly, the women who are trying to control a situation desperately on a given day in the White House. And uh, it's not supposed to be one particular president. It's an homage, (laughs) I guess you would call it, of all presidents. Well, (laughs) but it won won a couple of uh, Tony Awards that year. Rachel Dresch won uh, for her portrayal of Stephanie. Mm-hmm. And Teresa Sindelar is playing that part this this go-round. Oh, wow. Right. Yep, and you've got Sydney Redman. She plays Dusty, <laughs> and she, her character is called The Dalliance. Hmm. So I'll let you imagine what that okay. is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Nina Washington. Uh, and Brianna uh, Carradine. Oh, yeah, and Brianna oh, Carradine. There's Brianna. She yes. plays Chris. She's, she's the fly in our ointment. Just one of the many flies in our ointment. <laughs> she's a, a very eager uh, reporter who's trying to get a scoop and also take care of her newborn child oh, wow. at the same time. Yep, because that's how it goes for women. Right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. So this sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, one of the most gnarly <laughs> uh, <laughs> rehearsal processes I've ever been a part of, just because that's what farce demands. Mm-hmm. Um, it sure. really is like a workout and a therapy session and a uh, deep, deep dive into script analysis and tempo and rhythm. Um, but through all of that hard work, yes, we just opened last week and I won't speak for these two ladies, but yeah, it was obscenely fun. Like all that hard work leads to one of the most joyful experiences I've ever had on stage. That's great. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I second that. Oh, wow. And, and all, (laughs) I third that. (laughs) (laughs) And all three of you have done quite a bit at other places as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you've done? I know, Kim, you're not, uh, you're not a stranger to the podcast. You podcasted with us Mm -hmm. for Why Arts. What, what made you come back and, and audition for this production? I didn't see, actually see the production on Broadway, but I followed it and it just sounded so fun. And so when I saw that they were going to do it, I got a copy, read it, and I immediately, there's really only one role I could possibly play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, the oldest member in the cast. So, um, but I was afraid because of all of the physicality. It really, it really kind of frightened me. But with great direction and great fight choreographers like Kevin Barrett, we were able to make it look like I'm, I'm running and leaping and taking a punch and giving a punch and ah, uh, <laughs> wow! There's smoke and there's mirrors, 
But there's also really wonderful six other great women who are helping me me look that way. Oh, um, that's yeah. excellent. But I've done several shows at the at the Blue Barn, mm-hmm. but and I always just enjoy the opportunity of working with Susan. I love her creative process. Um, it's grueling, but it's a good grueling, <laughs> yeah. right, ladies? For sure. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Right, and I know Ashley. I think I've seen you do some other things, and I want to say maybe some comedy. I know that our beloved, one of my co-conspirators for Old School Shakespeare Omaha, Jay Hayden, they spoke with you. So I, yeah, I'm yeah. one of the founding members of OSSO. Yeah. Um, okay. So done every show with them so far. Excellent. One of the great joys of my life. Excellent. Mm-hmm. That's great. What <laughs> What made you want to audition for this role? So, and I actually came into it. I had, I had no, you know, like Kim just shared that she followed it on Broadway. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I actually didn't know that it was on. I'd never heard of it, and I just saw that yeah. they were posting it. I saw that I would be available for when the show would go up. And so I was like, oh, it's been a minute since I was at the Blue Barn. Like, let you know, and I picked up the play to read it. And uh, I don't, no spoilers about how the play starts, but uh, it's probably one of the most hilarious openings to a show ever. Uh, Literally uh, first uh, first word, first page. Awesome. And uh, I, I just fell in to this. I was, this is so funny. I have to be a part of this. I don't care what part I play. I think I even said that in on my like audition form. So yeah, that's 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 how all and, and it worked beautifully with the timing of my my life and what I have going on. Nice. So yeah, yeah, I love when that happens. It was just so funny yeah. and so challenging of a script. Yeah, it looks fun. And Kim, mm-hmm. I know you've done some things in New York. And are you are you from um, the Omaha area? No, I was born and raised in New York. Yeah, and. I've been coming to Blue Barn here and there over the years. Our great director, Susan Clement, and I went to college together. Excellent. Went to an arts conservatory at, Port- at Purchase College. And, yeah, I love coming to Blue Barn not only to work with my buddy, but there's such an incredible theater community here. Yeah. And I always have a really good time working with the other actors. And I really wanted to do this play. Uh, comedy is harder than drama I'd say for most actors um but definitely for me and um I didn't get to see this play on Broadway or in Chicago but I read it and I had a million laugh out loud moments (laughs) just reading and you know yeah just reading it and even while working on lines lines that I had heard already and Red already, just some of them crack me up, and they still do to this day when we're doing the show. I especially loved this play because more, as Ashley was saying, more than a comedy, it's a farce, which, you know, typically means lots of physicality and lots of doors opening and closing and um, usually a certain sort of chaos happening on stage. I knew Susan. Susan's good at everything as a director, but especially with comedy and physical comedy, she's she's a hoot. I really wanted this part as well. There's so many great parts, and as I was reading them, like Ashley said, as well, like the, oh boy, all these all these parts are would just be incredible to sink my teeth into. But I really wanted the president's sister, who is fresh out of prison and she's a drug dealer and and she curses a lot and you know as someone growing up in new york city in the 70s and 80s it just seemed natural you know (laughs) (laughs) it's been a blast and I, I'm not seen. Is there anyone who plays the president in this in, no. in this play? You there is no, see the president. You don't get to see him. No. no. <laughs> in a fashion. In a fashion, we do at That's some true. point. But um, no, we're not going to let a man on stage with us. No. Oh. There's, okay. there's just way too much feminine energy. Um, and yeah, we, t- we take we take the, the reins and we ride this pony. Excellent. All seven of us. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That's right. Um, I like it. Um, it's it's you said it's 2022, so it's super new, which is really nice, mm-hmm. and uh, especially with with something with subject matter like this. The fact that it's brand new it has to make it sort of extra fun. And an election year coming up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like the perfect year to do it. 
It is actually the I believe I read it's the most produced play of 2024. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Not surprising. There are regional productions of it going on across the country. Awesome. Wow. And a conglomeration of different presidents, that's got to have a lot of good gaffes in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think they miss a thing. <laughs> so, so what is it like working with all these amazing females? Mm-hmm. Well, we know how to get <laughs> shit done. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> so uh, rehearsals have been extremely productive. And, you know, besides... Susan Clement and our fight choreographer, Kevin Barrett, we all have some good ideas to throw into the mix. So it's been, it's, it's been fabulous. All, most of the women, all of us have really strong intuition and, uh, and you know, what feels wrong and what feels right and mm-hmm. very easy to express that to each other and then find something that feels good to all. Yeah, I agree with that. Everyone came so prepared and ready to Mm. truly play. Mm -hmm. And so I was just, I, I, from day one, I felt, I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing, but I felt very safe with this group of people and especially with Susan and Kevin. And it was great. It was just, a. it's, but for me, I usually love the process and I did love this process, but the playing of this is so freaking fun. I mean, we yeah. we start and then we're done and we're like, what happened? Yeah, mm-hmm. we're the go. Yeah, we're oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, that is that is the truth for sure. Yeah, in terms of performance, but to back up and talk about the process with these women, I love what Kim just said about. I didn't know what I was doing, but I felt safe. And that's like, that's the dream of like, I think any rehearsal room is we don't know where we're going, but we know we're going to get there. We trust each other. We lean on each other. I think it was also really helpful. And you two can tell me what you think about this or not. One thing I do like to share with people, as I say, it's one of the hardest rehearsal processes I've ever been a part of. And at one point, even Susan was like, hey, y'all, you know, when we got to like a a kind of a sticky moment headed into tech, you know, it's just that last week headed into tech is, you know, it can feel crunchy. You can feel like Mm -hmm. you can feel pressure. And I remember Susan looking at us all and going, you guys are doing great work and please don't, please don't collapse on yourselves because this is probably one of the hardest plays I've directed Mm -hmm. that came from, you know, Susan and hearing that and hearing Mm -hmm. that like, Oh, right. Like no one's necessarily an expert here. I mean, there's, Susan's pretty amazing. Um, but but like to even hear like we're finding this together, we're doing this together, yeah. I think is amazing. We we all came into the rehearsal room mostly off book. So we hit the ground running. Yes. We had moments where, you know, we would set up the skeleton of a scene. You know, here's here's where blocking is, you know, here's point A, here's point B. I don't quite care how you get to A to B, but you better be to B by this point. Okay. And then sitting then we would have moments where we'd sit down and just say the words and speak the words to each other, which was mm-hmm. so, so helpful. And I think goes even further to establish trust when you can just sit next to somebody mm-hmm. and speak to them yeah. versus having to take big bold risks or you know it's like no let me just connect with you as a human which i think is beautiful and has been my experience working at the blue barn uh, or certainly with with susan as a director i also love that all the women our age range is vast you know i think nina's the youngest uh uh, in her 20s and kim juvenbill and i won't share your age if you're weird about it I'm I'm gonna have my 69th birthday oh, this Saturday. Wow. Oh, yes, Saturday. Hey, happy yeah. birthday! Yes, happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> and so, and then all of us are in between there. Like, so you got 20s, yeah. 30s. That's that's incredible. That's I don't incredible. think anybody's in their 40s. We skipped 40s. I- 56. We skipped 40s. Uh, um, but anyway, <laughs> but that's again, I just think that's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, no, we're just vastly different mm-hmm. demographically, age wise, mm-hmm. and. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. It worked. <laughs> well, that's one of the things, especially uh, towards the end of the rehearsal process, especially with a comedy, it gets really hard. I think because it's 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 not funny anymore. And but mm-hmm. but you know it's funny. You know it's funny, but it's not funny anymore to you guys because you guys have done it a million times, and and you're getting to the point where it's like, God, can we just 
can we just get somebody in here to look at this? <laughs> <laughs> just one person even? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, whenever you rehearse comedy, you know, the old saying is faster, funnier, or louder. And comedy yeah. really does need to be quick or it's the death of it. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely were looking forward to like, you know, every night will be different, but, you know, where will the audience? tend to laugh where will yes. they have a huge laugh sometimes and so that that was really welcome because it also i felt it gave me a chance to breathe a little because we were just rehearsing things so fast you yes. know so as soon as there was a big laugh it was like okay deep breath what's my next and then you could jump jump yes. right in yes and i will say the playwright selena fillinger gave us such gave all actors such an incredible blueprint with the script because the way she uses bold lettering or italics or exclamation points is very, very specific because, you know, okay. like with most farces, chaos starts to happen. So if we all just start yelling each line, like there's an exclamation point at the end, it's, that's also the death of it. Yes. And boy, is she really, really good at certain lines. You know, if she if she didn't have such a great blueprint, certain lines you'd be sure were yelled, but they're not. And um, yeah. so there's an incredible musicality to the script and blueprint. And whenever I felt a little lost, I or and I, I'll, I will talk for others because you were bringing it up. When others felt lost, we just went back to the script. Mm -hmm. and we were like, oh yeah, interesting that. That whole section where I'm mad, she only really put these three words in bold letters, you know. So there's so much nuance to it. And um, we had fun fun with that and going back to that when things felt funny. Yeah. In addition, you know, Kim talks about the blueprint in the script. I, I feel like it would be worth mentioning that, yeah, so there's, there's words that are all caps frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, there are words that are italicized frequently. Mm -hmm. There are, if there's no period at the end of a thought, that means you're coming in and that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. the, the the lack of periods in this I think there's play. five periods in the entire play. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, oh, wow. Italics, all caps, lack of periods. Uh, if there's, a, if there's a big, if there's a big pause, there's a semicolon and that so I think that's something interesting for audiences to know when you, there's is. a big pause in the script yeah. that's written in there. It's there. That's not yeah. an actor choice. Huh? And right. Like, right. so again, just to speak to how this young woman's brain is construction, constructing all this is, is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you can't dither or move away from that rhythm or it all falls to pieces. Hmm. When yeah. she wrote this, she wrote it like a piece of music. Yeah, and, and Susan when Susan directed it, she directed it like a piece of music, mm -hmm. and it was her job to communicate that to us. We're the instruments; we got to play it. But sometimes she's like, "Yeah, no, that's a quarter note there. Yeah, you got to get up, get on it, and keep moving, and then no, that's a rest." Um, and your sometimes your actor instinct takes over, and it's not correct. Hmm. So. That was where Susan's guidance and the text. Um, and, and she did say she worked kind of backwards. Usually you sit down, you get your parts, you read the play, you do some text work, you're, you, know, you talk about your motivations. Here she worked kind of the opposite way. We got it up, we said the words, we got on our feet, we got our blocking, and then we went back mm -hmm. and made sure that we were clear on where those pauses are, where the overlaps were, where the interruptions were, and where the periods were, and most often, mo more importantly, where they were not. not. And once we kind of got that, all of a sudden it got a whole lot easier for me. I had a line that I was struggling with, and number one, it was really long, and I couldn't, didn't have a place to take a breath, and Susan's like, Kim, there's an exclamation point there. That's a sentence. And I'm like... Oh, I get to breathe there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it changed the whole dynamic mm -hmm. of what that moment was. Sure. And it was because yeah. I wasn't connecting with what the what the note was, the musicality oh, of that, yeah. that mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, so lots of really technical things in the dialogue, and then as well as the physical energy Yeah, as well. It, it, it has to be a bit of a challenge. And to keep that level every night, because you opened May 23rd, and you're going until June 23rd. How many productions is that? Yeah. I think it's 18. Okay. Wow. Nice. So, and yeah. and how did it go this weekend? I know we're catching you kind of right at the beginning of this, and you already started. Yeah. We had the most amazing moment on Saturday. <laughs> we, the, the the end of the of the thing is very dramatic, you know, and the lights go up, and you know, here we are all together, and the audience threw two dozen red long stem oh. roses ah. at us. We felt like we not we were ice skaters at oh, the Olympics. Yeah, we were that. just a bit overcome. It was That's it sweet. was so lovely. Oh, that yeah. is lovely. Um, and each audience yeah. has been different. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yet they're having a blast. Yeah, they are having a good time, and we are too. Sounds like yeah. it. I mean, yeah, yeah, politics can definitely make you mad or make you cry. So it's kind of fun that they're doing something that makes makes you. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can, and this, yeah. this show is pretty nonpartisan. To like, mm -hmm. it's is it like yeah. it? Yeah, it oh. doesn't have much of a political. Agenda. This could be anybody. This sort of equal this, this opportunity idiot offender. Could be yes. anybody. This idiot could be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, Fair enough. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I think. Opening weekend was an absolute joy. I, I think it's the most gratifying thing as an actor when you're having a blast because if you're not having fun, the audience inevitably won't have fun. And yes. so just that exchange of energy was so beautiful and important. Super generous audiences, but also just how much the seven of us just, I think, sunk into our characters in a, in a deep, deep and specific way. And for me, the ultimate trusting of each other and trusting the work that you've done done even if things like i'm not sure if this will work or i'm questioning myself or i'm questioning this choice and all of that kind of like fading away and just truly riding on the back of the work that you've done that would be you know how opening weekend was for me um mm -hmm. i don't know kim gambino if that's <laughs> yeah funny. yeah very similar thursday and saturday night were sold out so i will say Tickets are selling well, people, so if you're interested, make your reservations. Yes. <laughs> um, but, but really, from the first scene, it was just so nice to hear the, the la laughter and, the, and feel the warmth coming off the audience. But my, my all-time favorite is when the audience starts vocalizing a little bit. And <laughs> so I just love it when suddenly you hear someone say, uh-oh, or like, oh, no, or like, ah! Yeah. Oh, and we That's started awesome. hearing that very early on, on in all the shows. And I know, oh, good. They're, they're not only are they like having a nice chuckle, they're like, what's going on? And they're invested and they're, yes. they're really along for the ride. Awesome. So that was so much fun. What's so interesting is that, that there are seven women and at, at, at the beginning, at the top of the play, we all have kind of our own agenda. We each have our own job to do. Okay. Mine is to contain situations. Ashley's is to spin situations <laughs> once they've gotten out of control. Yes. Chris is the reporter. She needs to get a story. Um, the president's wife, she really would rather be president probably because – and she has a very unique relationship with her her husband. Um, and Bernie, well <laughs> – She's hot out of prison. And, um, she and is the, the situation. It's the, she's, 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 she's just a situation. She's just, she is one situation that's hard to spin. Another situation that's hard to spin is the dalliance, Dusty, which is Sydney Redmond. And oh, okay. um, so, you know, as the day goes on, our own personal agendas start to devolve and we have to start relying on each other more. And that's the, 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 this lovely thing that happens in this play is that it is so funny, but it also is a great, it's got a great message about women supporting each other. Mm. And, and I will say how we choose to support each other is unique, <laughs> but it's, it's really lovely. And <laughs> I look into Brianna's eyes in that, those final scenes and she's a lifeline to me. And yeah. uh, I see such hope. 
there. So, and same thing happens with Jean in special moments. Yeah. So, and I know all of us have stories like that. That's great. And to have plays that really open it up for women of all ages to audition and have yes. roles for for women. It's nice in to see all such ages. a it's wide great to age see range. That. Yeah. Yeah, especially something like this that's a comedy. And it sounds yeah. like everyone is really their own person. They're not, you know, they're not necessarily Somebody's the wife sidekick. of someone, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, <laughs> like a subset of someone. Right. They're their own person. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say most, uh, most of the parts are not age specific. You know, there are two moms, but in this day and age, that could be 23 or with in vitro, it could be 52, yeah, exactly. you know, like yeah. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. youngs of, uh, moms of young, young babies and children. So that's a breath of fresh air as an actress mm-hmm. with a lot of a lot of years on her, but it's it, yeah, it's, it's it, I, I just can't say enough about this playwright, and I just can't wait to see what's cool. next. And mm. Oh, and I you have we have to mention Teresa Sindelar, whose character is Stephanie. She I think I we might have missed her. She's the president's secretary. Oh, oh okay, and okay. she needs a little massaging of help to get some of her confidence. Mm-hmm. So I it's my job to give her some leadership and guidance okay. until Bernie comes, <laughs> and then <laughs> it gets a little more complicated after that. <laughs> and I see here that she yeah. she has some kind of mud slinging competition that she's doing with you all. Well, I wouldn't call it mudslinging, uh, but but Mud I, I it's, it's kind of a read the book and find out moment. You you won't believe it until you see it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, oh. I saw a dollar bill we and sure Venmo, didn't. so I had to ask. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. oh, that's right. Sydney and um, Teresa do have uh, a <laughs> dance number, a musical dance number together, oh. which is worth the price of admission in and of itself. Oh, yes, okay. yes, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. And it looks like it's not choreographed, but it is. But it is. Oh, that's even better. Gosh, there's all kinds of little Easter eggs in this. That's wonderful. Yes, this is going to be wonderful. <laughs> well, we're cool. really excited that you're doing this and and that you're able to have such fun at it as well. So, and thank you so much for talking with us. This was so much fun to hear about it. Yes. And it, it should make anyone who hears this want to go see it. Yes, it's the perfect time of Come year. Come see us. Come Come jump on the clown car. Yes. <laughs> Come laugh at it. <laughs> I love it. It was so nice to meet each one of you. I wish I could was- meet all your cast. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thanks Thank for you. having us. <laughs> Thank you. POTUS, or Behind Every Great Dumbass, are seven women trying to keep him alive by Selena Fillinger, directed by Susan Clement, opened on May 23rd with shows every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday until June 23rd. This show does contain explicit language and adult humor. However, it won't keep anyone away. Shows are selling out, so get your tickets at bluebarn.org or by calling their box office at 402-345-1576. This is the end of the Blue Barn's 35th season, so come celebrate their last show of the season. Be sure to check Blue Barn's website for more free engagement events and community partnerships which shine a light on remarkable women. Thank you for listening and supporting the arts in the Platte River area and beyond. Please subscribe to our podcast so you are sure to catch all of our future episodes and join us on social media. See you next time on the Platte River Bard. Thank you.